Griffith experiment, which indirectly proved the existence of DNA, the River Rouge Ford complex, which began construction in 1917, is finally completed and is the largest integrated factory at this point in time. Charles Lindbergh receives the Medal of Honor for his transatlantic flight. The year is 1928, and this was the fastest, smallest, lightest car in the low-priced field, the Whippet. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that takes the time to feature cars off the beaten path, breaking from script a little bit. This channel exists for you to dare to be different. We live in a world that is very much a throwaway world. There are still a lot of these cars out there. With that said, you can drive whatever you want to drive. Hell, I daily drive a 52 Chevy one-ton truck. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars and car brands that frankly are no longer around. We dive in deep on the history, specs, and talk about the design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds like a channel that interests you, something that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. I found this 1928 Whippet was part of the Old Car Festival, which is a pre-war car show at the Greenfield Village in Dearborn, Michigan, right next to the Henry Ford. All of the cars are before 1932, unmodified, and they drive them around in the streets. Not only that, they're in a period-correct town. Lots of people dress period-correct, so it's almost like going back in time for a weekend, which was really great. I honestly can't say enough good things about that car show, and honestly, it's probably my favorite car show this side of the Mississippi. It's honestly what the car hobby should be about. It should be about sharing your rides and experiences with everybody, and that's what that show is. You can experience those cars for what they were. A lot of people will say that those cars are going away, but that's not true. People are still keeping them, and I saw lots of kids, people younger than me, driving cars older than both of us. For those that may have never heard of the Greenfield Village, this is what it is. Henry Ford, you can think whatever you want of the guy, but he saw that what was happening to stuff, it was just getting destroyed and lost to time. So he decided to save a couple things. The village is almost 100 buildings on 200 acres. Most of the buildings are the actual buildings, like the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop. In 1908, John Willis bought Overland Automotive Division of Standard Wheel Company. Four years later, would rebrand it as Willis Overland Motor Company, which from 1912 to 1918, Willis Overland was the second largest automobile manufacturer in the USA behind Ford. Fast forward to 1926. Willis Overland introduced the Whippet line, which was a line of cars at the entry level. They were advertised as the fastest, smallest, lightweight cars in the basement price segment. The cars were named after Whippet dogs. The dogs could reach up to speeds of 60 miles an hour. You'll hear me say later on in the video, Greyhound. I just wanted to correct myself here, not Greyhound, Whippet. Willis Overland would offer the Whippet from 1926 for the 27 model year. The final year was 1931. Willis Overland, just like everyone else, had to consolidate and liquefy brands because of the effects of the Great Depression. It's also important to note, Whippet took the place of Overland. Whippet was 200 pounds lighter than the outgoing Overland with a longer, ever so slightly longer wheelbase. Whippet also offered a smaller but more advanced engine, full pressurized oiling system, pump circulating cooling of the engine. Really cool side note, the original Jeep engine can trace its roots back to this engine. Whippet also offered four-wheel mechanical brakes as standard equipment. With those advanced features combined with a low price point, put Whippet in third place for 1928, right behind Essex. 1928 Whippet could be had in two models, 96A, which was a four-cylinder model, or the 98A, which was a 43-horsepower six-cylinder model. The model 98 was brand new, and it replaced the 93. Our featured car is the 96A, and it could be had in a plethora of different body configurations. Coach, Cabriolet, Coupe, Roadster, sedan, touring, commercial van, 
panel delivery, open express, utility truck, baker's van, milk truck, as other conversions like pickup roadster and a bunch of different canopy top options. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of 100.3 inches. Shipping weight is 2,075 pounds. Price $545, which is equivalent to you spending $9,785.33 in the year 2023. There is no comparison to this car. We don't have any cars on sale today that are brand new that can be had for less than 10 grand. Just think about that. Total 1928 Willis Overland production was 315,000 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 134.2 cubic inch displacement, flathead 4, 2.2 liters. It's good for 32 horsepower, 3200 RPM, an estimated 60 pound feet of torque at 1800 RPM with a bore of 3 and 1 8 inches and a stroke of 4 and 3 8 inches. Three main bearings, it's built out of cast iron block and head it is backed with a three-speed manual transmission let's talk chassis front suspension uses solid axle with semi-elliptical leaf springs rear suspension is a live axle with semi-elliptical leaf springs four-wheel mechanical brakes let's talk styling look at these bumpers also look at the pinstripe inside these bumpers Two bars met in the middle here by this Greyhound figure like. Look at how these bumpers are mounted to the car. So look at these lights, they say Overland inside them. Here's my hand for reference. Fenders. Notice how this part of the fender extends past this part of the fender. Let's take a look at this grill. Nice whip it overland badge there. Take a gander at this mascot. Look at how these fenders are designed. Notice it doesn't have a bead or roll or anything, it's just flat. I love the accenting colors here. Wood spoke wheels. Look at how these lights are designed. The catwalk region. This car has a cowl vent. The windshield does crank out. The mirrors are mounted to the top here. There's the door handle. Check out these running boards and whip it right here. Rear fenders. Just like the just like the front fenders, there's not a bead or a flare or a roll or anything, it's just flat. It kind of kicks out the back a little bit. This car has a rumble seat. Check out the luggage rack here or basket holder. Check out these rear bumpers, the Greyhound insignia there and the pinstriping, steps to get inside, the rumble seat, it doesn't look like this glass goes down but the top comes down. Also check out this, notice how this is all sculpted in the door. This car has two mirrors. It's got a mirror on the other side too. So check out this door panel. Notice there isn't an armrest. You just use the door itself as an armrest. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. And notice it's all framed out. Also, this door doesn't have a frame around it. See that? Coming down inside the pedal box down here, Check out the floorboards. This car actually has real wood floors. Clutch, brake, gas pedal, footrest, starter, gear selector, emergency brake, 
underneath the mat is where the battery is. There's the battery. Take a look at this interior. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. On to the button switches and knobs. That screen is aftermarket, of course, and I believe it's for speed. Key, headlights, move it to the left for parking lights, move it to the right for headlights. Coolant temperature, which is an aftermarket gauge located just below. Amp meter, oil pressure, actual panel light, speedometer with odometer and trip. Up above, there are windshield wipers. Nice rear view mirror there and clock. Take a gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. This is what visibility looks like out the back. Green shaft, fuel filter. This is a vacuum pump. Draws the, draws the gas out of the tank and then it runs off the engine vacuum. Horn, updraft carburetor. Coming to the other side, oil can here on the firewall, coil, six volt, distributor, generator, the starter. The starter's smaller than the generator, that's funny. That's hilarious. On the positive side, these are different than your average Ford Model A. Small size car, loads of body styles to choose from, affordable cow vent, crank out windshield. These have a really nice use of materials throughout. Against it, some body styles are small and hard to get in and out of if you're a full size 2023 adult, which I swear we are a lot bigger now than they were back then. All right. Now it's time for Would You Rather. These may or may not be in the same price point, but which one would you rather have? 1928 Ford Model A or 1928 Willis Overland Whippet or 1928 Chevy. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for the second scenario, a bit outside the box. 1928 Falcon Knight, which was the entry-level sleeve valve engine or 1928 whip it or 1928 dodge once again you gotta leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video now it's time for name that tune first person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it that song is super underrated from the 60s that is your hint Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I'm currently at Hershey, so if the audio sucks, that's why, because um, it's, I'm not doing it the way that I usually do it. Um, if you guys want to meet up, just send me a message in the comment section below or send me an email or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel, all of which will be in the description below. Just know I really do appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!